Good morning, Internet, and welcome to a tech tip video for the automated drowning room, as well as hatch and pip ranching. On a couple of my videos, people have asked about how the drowning room works, and I realized that after a couple of game updates, some of the versions online no longer work correctly. So this is the setup. We'll go over the automation. So you got to think about this like it is four rooms. So you have the incubator room, the egg drowning, creature storage, and creature drowning. So each of the doors separated. These rooms don't have to be next to each other. They can be anywhere. I just find it convenient to have them next to each other. Automation, you have a critter sensor set to just critters. If anybody is in this, send a green signal. And this I have set to, if there's enough creatures in the room to drown some, then drown it. You don't need this. You could just say, hey, if there's somebody in here, kill it. That works as well. That then goes into a not gate because doors open on a green signal. So you have to then set it to not to flip it to red and then bam, creature hops in and dies. So here we'll set that to one. So anybody will do it. Let's we'll see if this pip hops in there. Boom, drowning. So that's that automation. The important thing about these two rooms is the amount of water. If you see, this only has four kilos of water per tile. If there's more than like five or 10 kilos, creatures won't jump into the water. They'll view it as too deep. So that was a change uh, from a couple of updates ago where creatures view water as dangerous and so they won't hop in if there's too much of it. But because this is a solid door, when the door closes, it then counts it as being full of water and the creature will drown. On the egg side, see if I can get a section of water, you have to have nearly a full tile. It doesn't have to be a thousand, but I think it has to be above 990. Anything less than 990 and the creatures won't drown. So that is the automation side. It's fairly simple. On the shipping side, all of my ranches grab basically everything in the room, but eggs specifically come down and get dropped off by this chute. This auto sweeper can see that room and these three incubators. So that's why this room has three incubators. You could design this to be bigger with more incubators on the other side and move the drowning chamber somewhere else. Shipping wise, we then have one set to pick up meat, which both sweepers can see. So if a creature drowns in here, this one sees the meat, dumps it. If a creature drowns from an egg hatching, this one can see it. Sweepers can see through pneumatic doors, so that's why you can just keep that door closed, keeps the critters from hopping out. See, after a little bit, this pip will drown. And if ever an egg hatches in here, that will automatically drown. Boom, gone, meat gets dumped over, and we're done. For the incubators, you just set them to whatever critters you want. If you give them power, it incubates them faster. So that's the drowning room. This other one, because I'm doing hatch ranching, is grabbing coal to feed to coal generators on this map. You could also grab the egg shells or whatever else you want to grab out of here and ship it. For the hatch ranch, stables can be a maximum of 96. So you end up with this shape where it is 27 wide and five tall or four tall. You put one block over here and a door and an airflow tile that keeps these critters from hopping over. So they see all this room and will multiply. They don't feel crowded. 
but they can't run very far away from the grooming station. And you can do that left or right. You could also do this vertically, where the room is this wide. Or it's six wide, but then ends up being tall. And you can actually do a vertical with the hatches on the bottom and a vertical with the hatches on top and stack them next to each other. That works as well. For the pit branch, you want to find an area where you can leave natural tiles. As long as you only have arbor acorns in there, the pips will plant the trees for you and then you don't have to water them or fertilize them. You need more sweepers to cover more area. But that works. And then these are picking up the lumber and the eggs and whatever else the pips drop. Every once in a while, I'll see that the number's down too low. I'll just switch one of these incubators over from stone hatch eggs to pips. Once all the ranches are full, you don't have to keep all three running. I just find it's easier to constantly cook them as fast as possible. You end up getting more meat out of it for the cost of some wattage. And then you can stack them all up. On other maps, I've gone through and put in uh, conveyor receptacles and then automated the delivery of whatever the animals are eating. You know, you come down here to your pile of stuff and have it grab out sandstone or granite or whatever you want the hatches to eat, and that works. So I hope that answers questions about the drowning room. And then might as well do the room size for the pit branch in order to make it 96. Same width, you don't need the doors because pips will run everywhere anyway. You just gotta knock off four tiles, makes it down to 96. Thank you for watching this tech tip video. If you have questions or comments, post them on my videos. I will try to answer your questions or post a video for you to see how it works. Thank you for watching and I hope you all have a wonderful day.